bruh. I leave for Europe for three weeks, the entire Bitcoin market on itself. What's up YouTube, my name's Red. I'm a software engineer and entrepreneur living in Houston, Texas, the greatest country on earth. Today, I'm hoping to share a tool to help you guys answer the age old Bitcoin question. Should I be Bitcoin mining or am I better off just dollar cost averaging spot Bitcoin? So if you guys watch the end of the video, I'll be sharing a spreadsheet that I'll have linked down in the description that I've been using for myself to determine whether or not it's worth it to start Bitcoin mining. I'll share where I'm getting the data from. I'll show you how to update the spreadsheet and how the spreadsheet works. And then I'll go through some of my personal takeaways just to give you guys an idea of some other things that you should be thinking about when you're running these calculations so that hopefully you better understand the costs and can make a better decision for yourself. So go down below and smash the like button for Bitcoin mining math and let's level up your brains. <laughs> All right, guys, so if we come into the spreadsheet here and we go all the way down to the bottom, we'll see that I haven't updated the data in the spreadsheet since April 28th of this year. And so if we want to get the rest of the data from April to July, I'll show you how to do that right now. If you're not interested in ever updating the data that's in this spreadsheet, if you're watching this in like, you know, August and you don't care about the July to August data, feel free to skip this section to the next part of the video. But if you do want to learn how to get new data into the spreadsheet, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So we'll come back to Glassnode and up here at the top, we're going to select the date range from whatever the bottom of the spreadsheet is. So in this case, it's going to be 429, which is the next day until today. So let's go back to April 29th and we'll get that from April 29th until today. We'll scroll down and we'll click on download JSON. You could download CSV here and it will be a lot easier, but you need a pro Glassnode subscription. I don't pay for that. So I'm just going to download JSON. Downloading JSON is totally free for everyone. And then we're going to come over to the CSV json.com this is basically just a free online json converter and it will turn your data into spreadsheet usable data so let's go ahead and click our json file here and let's go ahead and click on convert so now if we highlight all of this and copy we can come back over to our spreadsheet and come into our instructions for each column section and paste this here i'm going to write some code here to separate these values for you so in the future if you ever want to paste in new values you'll just have to come and paste them paste values values in a 12. And it looks like I'm actually missing 429. So if you come back here, you're going to want to do it for the day before. So let's go ahead and do 428 until today. And then if I download the JSON and do the exact same steps again, we'll see that this time I did get the 429 data. And then let's make a column where we format dates. All right, so we formatted our dates here. Now let's just scroll down and copy all of these and then head over to our analysis tab. Going to enter a bunch of rows below here. I think that should be enough. We'll just come up here and write right click and paste the values only. And so now we're caught up on the dates. Now we're going to want to catch up on this next variable, which is hash rate. So we'll come back over here, copy all of these values and do the exact same thing. We're just going to right click and paste values only. And the rest of these columns are just formulas. So we should be able to just scroll these all the way down. And so now we have fully up to date hash rate data with the latest data from Glassnode. And then the final thing you'll need to fix here is you'll need to copy this formula here to get actual Bitcoin price data into your sheet instead of just pulling down whatever the last static number is. I don't want to have Bitcoin price data in every single row of the sheet because there's like 2,500 rows now, and that is going to severely impact the performance of your sheet if we're trying to do these calculations all the time. So let's go ahead and line this up with 2355, and this should be giving us accurate price data if we scroll this all the way down. Down, and we'll see that as of today, we're at about 21,000. So now that all that has updated, next let's go ahead and talk about how the rest of the spreadsheet works. So you can see up here, we have the date column that we just populated from Glassnode. We have the hash rate column that we also just populated from Glassnode. And then we have the hash rate in terahashes per second, which is just the hash rate number we got from Glassnode divided by 10 to the 12th. Terahash per second is the unit that a lot of these miners are using when they're saying we're mining 100 terahashes hashes per second. The data from Glassnode is in just regular hashes per second. So that's just the unit conversion we had to do there. Over here, we have approximate block reward per day in Bitcoin. Every halving, the block reward gets cut in half. At this point in time in 2015, when Google started to keep track of Bitcoin price data, the block reward was 25 Bitcoin per block. And so to make the per day conversion, we have to take, you know, 60 minutes in an hour, about every 10 minutes, you get a new block of Bitcoin. And then 
multiply that by 24 hours in the day. And so you can see if we scroll down, I've just manually put in the halving dates. And so you can see here it's 12.5 in 2016 here. And if we continue to scroll down, we can see that eventually fall to 900 back in 2020. And that's about what it's at today as well. Again, this is very approximate, but it's the closest numbers that we're going to get. All right, guys, so that's how I was calculating block reward. The next thing that I just added to the spreadsheet here is the total amount of fees per day. And if you want to update that, we're getting the data again from Glassnode. And we're just going to update that in the exact same way that we updated hash rate towards the beginning of the video. I went ahead and made this column C so that you can drag down the rest of these. These should, most of these should be formulas and they should be dragged down a bowl. But all of this data over here, you know, ABC is all coming from Glassnode. And so when you combine the approximate block reward per day with the total amount of fees in Bitcoin that are happening on the network every day, you're getting the total total amount of theoretical Bitcoin that's going out to miners every day. And there is actually even more accurate data on these numbers from Glassnode. And so if you did have a T2 subscription, you could get all of the up-to-date data. Glassnode is only showing us the data here up until July, it looks like, of 2021. So you can't get the last year of data if you do have a free plan. But I've sort of created like a ad hoc, you know, it's not the exact numbers that Glassnode is giving you here. And the reason for that is that the data that I have aggregated here doesn't take into account the difficulty adjustment and all of that. So again, these are more raw numbers and this is going to give you a good general ballpark idea of what mining is going to do versus dollar cost averaging, but this is not financial advice for the hundredth time that I've probably said this in this video. And there is definitely more reliable data out there if you're willing to pay for it. With that being said, we do have pretty good data here and we can make a lot of inferences and do a lot of analysis on the data that we are able to get for free in the spreadsheet. And so if we combine the total amount of fees that are paid per day with the approximate block reward per day, we can get an idea of the total amount of money that's going to miners every day. And then we also know how much a single miner, like maybe the S19 or the S19J Pro, we know how much of the total mining network one of those machines makes up on a given day because we have the total terahash of the network here. And so what we can see is that if we scroll down, we'll see that the S9 didn't come into existence until June 10th of 2017. You could theoretically like like pull this up and get, you know, what if you had had an S9 on November 19th, 2015, but that's just not realistic data, right? Because the S9 machine didn't exist at that point. So if you want to scroll down here, you can see that I'm basically taking minor data from the minor data sheet. In this case, I'm taking the hash rate in terahash per second of the Antminer S9. And I'm basically saying how much Bitcoin was that Antminer S9 mining on this day in US dollar terms and in Bitcoin terms. And again, these are, you know, close to accurate numbers, but obviously not precisely accurate numbers because this block reward was not exactly the same every single day. And so you can see here back in 2017, the S9 was mining about, you know, between 10 and $15 a day. And then as the bull market starts to really rage here at the end of 2017, it's starting to make $30 a day and $40 a day. And then as prices crash, you know, it's making $6 a day and $7 a day for quite a while. And then you can see that as of today, it's lower than it ever has been. They're mining about 97 cents a day or about a dollar a day. And the reason that those numbers never came back up after 2017 is that while the price did go higher in 2021, the hash rate was also much higher. And so this S9 machine with its relatively small 11 terahash per second hash rate just wasn't able to compete with some of these newer machines that existed around that time. You know, the S19 J Pro was coming out in the middle of 2021 and it had about 10 times the hash rate. And so if you go back to the analysis here, you can see see that in July of 2021, I added the data for the S19. And you could see that right off the bat when the S19 comes online, it's making about $35 a day, it gets up to about $40 a day. And then over the last few months, it's crashed down into, you know, tens of dollars a day, and all the way down as low as it looks like $7 and 26 cents a day here. And so again, you can kind of play with this however you want, right, you could put in whatever, you know, theoretical machines that you wanted to put in here. The idea of these columns is just that you want to get the Bitcoin value of the miner that you're looking to purchase per day, and then the US dollar value of whatever that Bitcoin is on that day. And so this is, again, the US dollar value if you had taken this Bitcoin as soon as it was mined, and then market sold it at the price that Google Finance was saying that it was on that day. So right here, it was $2,900. If you had market sold, you know, these 5 million Satoshis that you got, you would have gotten $15 at that price. All right, guys, so the final column here is DCA, and it's the amount of Bitcoin that you would be getting every day if you were dollar cost.
cost averaging a static US dollar amount into Bitcoin every day. And I'll show you in a second how I'm coming to the numbers that we got here when we check out this dashboard tab. So, so far we've covered how all the data in this spreadsheet works and how to update hash rate and total fees per day. And then we've also seen that if you have, you know, a higher level of Glassnode membership, you could actually just be pulling in this strict and more accurate data from Glassnode itself. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at what the actual results were of compiling this data in our dashboard tab. So if we come to this mining dashboard here, we can take a look at method. So dollar cost averaging S9 and S19 J Pro. We can see the start dates. We can see the number of days between those start and end dates. We can see for dollar cost averaging, the amount that you would be purchasing every day. And then for the miners, what the upfront cost of the unit was. And this is going to vary based on when you bought the miners. So you could play around with this and put in your own data. The electricity cost for which dollar cost averaging, there's none obviously. And then with the miners, we'll go over in a minute how we're calculating these electricity costs. And then the total cost of ownership for all of these strategies, the dollar cost averaging, obviously just taking the daily times the number of days. And then the S9 taking, you know, the unit cost plus the electricity cost, giving us the total cost. If you're using compass mining or something like that, obviously there are more costs to be included. Maybe insurance on your miner could be one. There's a whole host of costs that you could really include here. That's not really in the scope of this video and you can play around with that, you know, to your heart's content. We'll get an ending Bitcoin number for, you know, if you had dollar cost averaged over this amount of time and you had done this per day, this is the amount of Bitcoin that you will have today. And again, all of these numbers are coming from that data analysis tab. Same situation with the S9 and the S19J Pro. If you had mined since this day until this day, based on the hash rate numbers and everything else that we just did, this is the amount of Bitcoin that you would be left over with. This is the amount that that Bitcoin is worth today, given today's prices, according to Google Finance. Here's your return and here's your ROI. And so something that should pop out to you right away, I've set the costs for dollar cost averaging and the S9 to be exactly the same. And I've set the start date and the end dates to be exactly the same. So if you had been mining with the S9 since the very beginning of the release of the S9 and your miner had never been offline for any reason and it didn't totally the bed and break or you know some guy didn't steal it or something like that, very happy path solution. There are tons of risks to mining that I'll go over in a later video. But if everything worked out the way that it was supposed to, you would have ended up with 1.11 Bitcoin. And if you had just done a dumb dollar cost averaging strategy of buying the same amount every day, you would have ended up with 0.75 Bitcoin for an ROI of about 100% less. So your ROI in the mining case is about 246%. And the ROI of dollar cost averaging over the same period of time, spending the exact same amount of money is only 135%. Next, if we look at the S19J Pro and we fix these dates and we set the cost to be exactly the same as the cost that we're dealing with down there. So let's make this 12047.77. We will see that we are now buying much more Bitcoin every day because the time horizon is shorter. We're spending the same amount and we're returning slightly more via dollar cost averaging. So both strategies here doing very poorly because Bitcoin is in a bit of a bear market right now. The market has totally while I was away in Europe. Hopefully now that I'm back in the United States, things can uh, start to go better for us here. But you can see that the dollar cost averaging strategy has returned minus 47% and the S19J Pro has returned minus 63%. So definitely over different time horizons, there are different strategies that are gonna be better and worse. And you can sort of put in your own numbers here and play around with what you think is good. If let's say today, maybe an S19J Pro is worth $5,000. Let's say you started mining in May of, of 2022, ooh, 69 days, look at that. And we fix this dollar cost averaging here to be the same cost. Let's make it 5378.81. If we did this, obviously we can see mining has done much worse because this miner has not really gotten much time to mine anything. We spent all of this money for it and it has only returned to us about $600 of Bitcoin so far. And so that's another thing to factor into this dashboard that this dashboard is not just gonna come out and tell you, you have to use your brain a little bit here is that if you buy an S19J Pro right now, you shouldn't expect it to ROI really for a while. And you can play around with the numbers and see for yourself how long it took an S9 to ROI. I've done a little bit of math and it seems like about a year you were comfortably in the black with the S9. But if you looked on into deeper parts of that bear market in 2018, there were probably points of it where you had lost money, you know, two years in or something like that if you had not been taking profits along the way. And so again, this spreadsheet is 
just meant to be a guide for you. It's not meant to, you know, necessarily make any of these decisions for you. Another thing that you should consider that is impossible to include in this spreadsheet is the fact that these electricity costs, if you are running your miner as part of a business, are business expenses. So these are pre-tax dollars. Whereas over here, all of these DCA purchases are theoretically post-tax dollars, unless you're operating within a hedge fund or something. Obviously not tax advice. I'm not an accountant and I don't play one on the internet, but just another thing for you to factor in here. So that's pretty much it for this dashboard page. Next, let's go ahead and check out the miner data page. If we go ahead and look at this miner data page here, this is basically just very simple information about the S9, the S19J Pro. And then if you wanted to include any other miners here, I just wanted to keep an organized place in this spreadsheet to put static numbers like the hash rate, like the release date, like the release price, like the price usage in kilowatts, which is used in part to get this electricity cost field, and then the daily power cost, which is just our assumption of how much our electricity is going to cost times the amount of power usage for the miner that we're looking at. So if we come over to the assumptions page now, we can look at all of these different variables. Maybe you want to look at the cost of your electricity. How long will your miner be down for? You could make this a factor. Maybe you're expecting like 90% uptime or something. You could also look at miner insurance. Maybe that's going to be, you know, $100 a month or something like that. I have no idea what these actual numbers would be, but there are things that you could include for yourself. Just play around with the spreadsheet and include this data in the different parts of the spreadsheet that you find it to be helpful in. Again, this is meant to be a tool. This is not meant to make decisions for you. And so again, I'll leave the spreadsheet down in the description. All you're going to do when you click the link to the spreadsheet is come up here to file and then click on make a copy. And then once you have that local copy, you'll be able to put in whatever numbers you want. If you don't like the data that I've put in there, you can put in other data. The world is your oyster here and you can use this spreadsheet to hopefully make a much more informed decision about whether you want to be mining at all or whether you want to just stick to dollar cost averaging Bitcoin. Some quick takeaways here at the end of the video. Bitcoin mining is not some get rich quick scheme and it's definitely not some like retire on a beach forever. There's no work. There's no risk passive income scheme. It's definitely possible to lose money Bitcoin mining, especially if Bitcoin doesn't perform well over the next couple of years. That being said, if you are bullish on Bitcoin, I do think that Bitcoin mining can be a good way to hedge or augment your dollar cost averaging strategy. Instead of the amount of Bitcoin that you're accumulating being tied strictly to the price, you now have an alternate vehicle that is basically dollar cost averaging the hash rate of Bitcoin. And the hash rate of Bitcoin and the price are not directly tied one to one. If the hash rate crashes and old miners go offline, but the price remains steady, you're actually going to be accumulating more Bitcoin in that time period via mining than just dollar cost averaging. And it seems like over long periods of time in the happy path case, mining does outperform dollar cost averaging, especially when you consider the fact that almost every cost associated to mining can become a business expense if you hold your miners within a company. Again, not financial advice, not tax advice. That being said, of course, this is happy path. All sorts of things could go wrong with your miner. And if you are interested in mining risks, let me know down in the comments. I'll make a video on what the biggest mining risks are with mining in general, and then with compass mining more specifically. If it were to hit the fan with your miner, it would have obviously just been better to dollar cost average Bitcoin, which I think is still the safest way to accumulate Bitcoin for the long run. Comment down below if you guys are interested in mining and if you found the spreadsheet to be helpful. My compass mining miner is supposed to come online, fingers crossed, at the end of August. So hopefully I'll have some more mining content for you guys before the end of this year. I know a bunch of has been going down with compass mining since I last filmed the video. I've been away for a couple of weeks here and they have had a track record of not getting miners online on time in the first place. So we'll see how that goes and I'll update you guys if anything goes wrong with my individual use case. I'm interested to see sort of what content comes out of this and to inform you guys of the risks and maybe the benefits, hopefully if everything works out with my unit correctly. I'll put all the mining content up in the cards in a playlist. So definitely check that out, especially if you're watching this video far into the future after it's been posted. Hopefully that playlist has a lot more videos in it by then. Like the video if you learned something and subscribe for new videos every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern. I love you all. Goodbye.